Shot 2011 Part 2 Spider Co. Booth review, nothing fancy style, covering some blades. God, they got a lot of blades. And I'll tell you, PFI, when I when I see all these cool blades, I get kind of scared because it's like I realize how much work I have to do to cover. <laughs> Me too. And generally, I don't review stuff unless I really dig it. Right. But the thing is, when I come to the Spyderco booth, I dig it. There's so many blades. I mean, is that or Mr. Flight? Mr. Ed Shimp. Our host again here in the Nut and Fancy Project. We sure had a good time with him in shot 2010. What did you think about that, how that turned out? Well, it was an amazing review. I, I had no idea that your audience, it's, it's rather large, was, was amazed. We got yeah. a very good reception. Good guys. Um, we sure had loved having you in shot 2010. Uh, everybody, I mean, Sal did great. We talked a lot about some other knives that we won't cover this year. We talked about the Warrior, the Gale Bradley. Um, at that time, the uh, full flat ground Delicas and Enduras in different colors were coming out. I think that's been relatively relatively successful for Spyderco, those versions, right? Many of the inline users are preferring the full flat grinds over the Sabre grinds. Yeah. Uh, they're very, very nice knives. Beautiful knives. Excellent approach to material, uh, regardless of what you're trying to cut. Amen. Amen. Okay, this year we're going to cover some different stuff. You throw in any of your knife making philosophy or observations on material, like we love hearing from you. Your choice of what you want to cover first. Let's start with smallest. Okay. This is the balance. This is your design? Yes, sir. It was designed to be bisymmetrical. And it's a very small knife. I, I wanted to come into that market mm -hmm. and put knives in, in a lot of non-knife people's pockets and purses. It's a very small, three-fingered knife, but it allows for very high leverage cutting. Approximately a one-inch cutting edge, but a very secure grip. Uh, it handles blister packs, envelopes, very well for general cutting task. It's a, it's a great little knife. Excellent. Price point on that's about 25 bucks, right? Sorry about that. <laughs> No, actually, this has a about a $200 MSRP. There you go. Ouch. There is a stainless version on the horizon that will probably be out in the next six months. Okay. That will have a much lower MSRP. Um, it's approximately half the thickness right. of this Ooh, current That would version. be actually interesting. A and really they, super thin one. They have a very stout clip, so even on thin material, they clip easily and hold on well. And with the spider drop, because it's symmetrical, you don't know which way to go with it. You just wiggle it a little bit, shake it out, and it opens. Nice. Pricey, but an interesting little blade, and it has a cool philosophy behind it. Um, reading the comments uh, on your review, as well as other reviews on the web. The biggest disappointment on this knife is the price. But with the yen being so strong and the dollar being relatively weak, um, and fairly low number of these were produced, roughly 600 pieces. So the cost was amortized over that number of knives. That again led to the increase in the MSRP. Oh, okay, so it's not a widely produced knife. It's gonna no. be very limited. 600's like almost nothing in the knife world. Right, it's more like a sprint run. Exactly. But the, the stainless version will be a regular production item. It will be comparably priced to the uh, Cricut has the same manufacturer. Excellent. Next up, Navaja. Uh, this is part of the Ethnic series and I wanted to capture the spirit of the Navaja. I use the Corsican Navaja as uh, a model to work this off of, but if you can hear it, it has a slight so cool. Yeah, that is the coolest Karaka thing. mechanism in it. And unlike the, the mechanism that's on the standard Navaja Caracas, this one will not self-destruct. It's independent uh, to a degree will not from the destruct. From that's the a good thing to have with life mechanism. <laughs> but it does give a very unique feel opening and closing. It's almost like a zipper. 
throw. It is a fun knife to play with. It has a fair amount of reach. I usually have a fairly long choil because sometimes I like to choke up on the knife. But effectively in a four-fingered grip, it extends the reach of the blade almost an inch and a half in the case of this knife. So this would be near the legal limit, but the effective range of the working range of the knife is well beyond that. What's it where's that legal limit pertain to? Four inch used to be the standard. Now there's very many different laws to, depending on the jurisdiction. Some places uh, under three inches, federal buildings under two inches. So there's there's a lot of variability in, in what's needed in the length of the blade. This knife is light too. Carbon light. fiber, four position clip. The maker in Taiwan is a very good maker. He shipped the material from the United States to steel to make this knife. But if you check the, the chamfering on the edges, particularly where they're, they're going to be worked, they're all radius and smooth, it's comfortable. The, the edges don't bite you. It has a nice radius on the handles. But uh, excellent maker. This you knife, said that other makers wouldn't have made this knife. What do you mean? Well, there aren't a lot of people that will attempt unusual projects. So this knife has been uh, to uh, different OEM manufacturers in Europe and uh, Japan, and no one really wanted to make it. This maker in Taiwan does an excellent job. Uh, he's produced the Sage series with all the complex locks. Uh, very talented man, very small shop, family business. Nice, the quality levels are that are superb. Uh, I'm not gonna hit all the price points on these. Yeah. But the street price is gonna differ so much from the mm -hmm. list anyhow. Big time. Um, so we can cruise though. Beautiful knife though. I like the weight, 4.75 ounces, which for that blade size is actually pretty good. You milled out those liners too, right? Completely milled out liners. Yep. Right, let me switch the battery out real quick. Next up, Ed Shimp's Persians. You'll see that reviewed in the Nut and Fancy Project. I love these knives. These knives are reissues of uh, knives that were discontinued. The large Persian several years ago, the small Persian last year. Uh, changes have been made. They ha now have a full flat grind. The knife is much thinner. And it's G10, no bolster. I found that these carry very nicely, they're lighter, um, yep. they have good texture on the grip. Uh, consequently, we were talking about earlier, I don't necessarily put much jimping on my knives. If the handle has texture and the handle is properly designed, it locates your hand. That with, uh, I use a lot of negative blade angles, so when you hold this knife out, that edge is in line with my large muscle groups. And that avoids having to use your wrist to do all the work. It lets you go to your large muscle groups, lets you reduce the tension on your grip. Comments that I had on this and uh, skinning different animals were that they were done sooner, they weren't tired, and they didn't cut themselves. So those are important criteria to me in the use of a knife. Everything you just mentioned is why I am interested in this model of Persian. I thought your other one, like you said with the bolster, there's a little bit heavier, different grind. Good knife. For me though, it just, it didn't move me. These knives moved me for everything you just said. Thinner, lighter, good traction, full flat ground, awesome. Uh, you don't want to put jimping on. I understand what you're saying about the handle. That's easy enough to do too. I mean, it's probably blasphemy to you, but you can put skateboard tape on the back of that spine. <laughs> we haven't ever seen that before. Maybe a couple times you've seen that in that fancy project. I like maximum traction because when I'm approaching a tactical blade that could be covered in sweat, blood, sorry, I want maximum traction for that. And anything I can do as a user, I'll do that. But I love these blades. They're gorgeous. And there's a small one. That was really cool too. Now is this the Persian and the Persian 2? Well, these are both Persian 2s. This okay. is a C83 uh, full flat ground. This is a 104 or 105 okay. uh, full flat. There they are right there. But they're both second generation. Yep. Uh, 
220, what was that for the big one? Uh, the Persian 2 retails at 220, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Again, these are just uh, yeah. retail prices, guys. You can find differences. I love the clips on them, too. Standard Spyderco clips. The clips on these knives were specially designed for the Persian knives. Kind of not a, a, not a generic clip, they're yeah. curved. And that creates a problem in that you don't for or do two position the clip. Right. It only allows for one position, but in use, it's it's very handy to have that in a, in a notch in your hand that flows with the knife. It doesn't create hot spots. Lefties may not totally dig it because they can't swap it. Right. You exactly. have to have a, a kind of a reversed clip on it. Right. A special clip would have to be made. Okay. Cool. That's the Persian by Ed Shimp. Love it. You'll see it more in the Net and Fancy project. Next up, Zulu by Spider Co. Hi, right, I'm sorry you had a question. Oh, I, I had a mental block on the name of Yen's, Yen's answer. Yeah. Yen's is it happens friend. to me in tabletop too. <laughs> All is nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got the Zulu up next here at Spider Co. with Ed Shim. Hit it. Uh, Yun's is uh, a very good custom knife maker from Denmark, very, uh, very mechanically oriented, and we share quite a few things in design, negative blade angle being one of them, occasionally index finger grooves. Yun's uses a textured grip on his handles. Almost like a flint, flint yeah. nap surface. Uh, the Fred Perrin PPT wears that same style. Yes. Kind of chiseled look. Right. Yens has been using that for years on his uh, custom pieces. It's really cool. Like you say in the ca uh, catalog, it kind of has the look of a topographical map. It's chiseled out G10. The nice radius on the handle, when, when you go and have to actually push this knife forward onto something, you have this radius in the palm of your hand, so you're not relied on an extremely tight grip to hold the knife. You just hold it in position, and you let the palm of your hand do the work to, to penetrate a hard to penetrate object. So it's much safer than, a, than just having a, a guard on a knife. Um, in test, we've done with buoy knives against uh, body armor. You think that there'd be some resistance. We slammed those buoy knives through the body armor so hard the guard bruised the fronts of our hands. So it's nice to have the grip pressures being diversified throughout the hand, particularly on the heavier spots. Good point. That is a good that point. That is a very good point. I like it. So that would transfer to the heel of the hand where, like, just like you're saying, you protect your fingers. And there's no more. straight parts on this hand. So curves are very natural and ergonomic for the use of a knife. Beautiful knife. Uh, price point on that's about $25 with a CPM S30B. <laughs> so pricey knife, man. Pricey materials. I, I didn't think light. you did fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your fantasy knife review. C145G Zulu weighing an amazing 3.5. Four ounces, organic curve, and I was actually talking to Sal about that. Or was that you, Ed? Said you can. No, it was Sal saying you can sharpen that, no problem on the sharp maker. Oh, the, the curves are not an issue on the sharp maker. That's their because uh, you're running knife against sharpener. one or, or a, yeah. a small flat surface, and the knife follows the surface, which would follow the curve. So it's not not an issue sharpening. Awesome. Okay, Bob Lum. Bob Lum's design, of course, is classic. Um, Bob was one of my hero designers. He did the most with the fewest number of lines and conveyed elegance and design. And this is an old traditional uh, Chinese design that Bob adapted. This knife has been out on the market in alamite and other, other materials. This G10 is extremely unique. It's from a rotary loom. And uh, it, it's just extremely beautiful material as well as being extremely strong and of course lightweight. That's G10 on that handle? Oh, oh carbon fiber. Carbon yeah. fiber, yeah. excuse me. Yeah, it's in PFI you were saying this, you know, you look at it and you go, wow, that has that Some traction. Texture, yeah. But when you look, it's actually completely smooth. It's kind of like, like a glass. holographic uh -huh. image, really. It has a lot Beautiful. more depth to it. Um, let me come over here where there's yeah. real light. A lot more depth to it 
uh, than you would think. I but love that handle. As far as second type of cool, just looks, it's a beautiful knife. You ain't gonna get crap for traction off of it though. No. But that's not really what this knife is about, I don't know. Wide blades are, are nice when you want to be accurate with cuts. You have the ability to lay them down. To align the blade is much easier with a wide blade. So accurate cutting, light cutting, it, it's wonderful. And of course yeah, it has a nice ergonomic curve to the handle. But these wide blades are, are very strong. Them. They shear like crazy. The full flat ground, wide ones. I love the leaf blade shape too. And uh, I think were we talking about off camera, but you're wrong about how it just kind of had renewed interest after our SHOT Show review. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, your, your initial Barong review as well as the SHOT Show review. Uh, the Barong and the Kukri came out about the same time and they were both very unusual knives and didn't get market acceptance. And as people discovered the knives, they were already discontinued. Yeah. Which is another important part of, of Spider Coast policy is that knives can be discontinued, but it doesn't mean they're gone. Like the Persian has been brought back. It's been changed, it's been modified. A lot of these for use are, are improvements. It's thinner in the pocket, lighter weight. Totally agree. Still has all the performance aspects of the larger. Uh, heavier version. So who knows, maybe you know as time goes by and that that desire to get a barong will kind of build up and then later you can reissue it a couple years down the road and now you have a best seller on your hands. That, that will more than likely happen. This knife has been reissued three different times. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so that's the Bob Lum. Uh, that was a C65 CF for that unusual one. They also have uh, the C143G, the larger version of the Lum. To run around here uh, somewhere. Just don't have time to cover them all. And now we go to the value line, the bird line, where there's some changes. Some have been around for a while, some are new. This uh, Karakara has been around for a long time, and for a large working knife, it's an extremely good value. Spyderco took their philosophy to China when they had this line made, which was the best that the Chinese have to offer. So this knife has a MSRP of, I don't know, it's under $40. I think street, I, I'm just guessing here because I'm not online, but 25 bucks. Yeah, probably. But the G10, maybe a little bit more, 30-ish. You could score that knife. Yeah, it, it's in that range, but at either, either number, it represents a lot of value. It's full it, flat ground, too. It's much like the Endura in size, mm -hmm. but it does have this forward index finger choil, which I tend to put on almost all of my designs. Love it. Because I tend to use a knife in different uh, grip configurations. Like uh, Sal's Cali 3 we just talked about, top and bottom. Exactly, that's Love a wonderful design. Love that knife. 10 out of 10, baby. Uh, and then you change the handle on... This, this is a... a F I like that a lot better. This is a FRN handle. It is a molded handle. Mm -hmm. um, this will be uh, even a little less money than the, the G10 version but it still has all the attributes, all the strength, nested liners, uh, and they're skeletonized as well. Yep. So it, even though it's FRN, it has the strength of the liners. Decent weight on that. Decent. Screw construction. Very lightweight knife. I like that better PFI than the, you know, they had the theme, the bird thing going on the original ones. They kind of had the feather look to the FRN. Yeah, it wasn't super high traction. It was no, it okay. Wasn't. Medium traction, but this is much better. These would actually lock into your thumb. Uh, nice. High value, and there's a much more on the bird line. There's actually jimping that, of a type that's put into the back of the handle. It's not oh, in the steel, but it's actually it pretty does sharp, it too. Quite that's a cool looking one. Yeah, I haven't looked at this one tabletop wise. I did the the Kara Kara, the original version. I did a tabletop version on it. That is, that is functional too, dudes. It locks it in. For a twenty-five or thirty-dollar knife. Yeah. The only my only issue is they still have you know the deployment hole looks like a bird's eye. It still works absolutely fine. You know, second type of cool, is that what yeah. you want? I don't know. I, I kind of prefer the regular, the regular circle. circle. It, yeah. it still does the spider drop. You have something yep. to hold on to. Uh, Value-wise, though, you can't beat them. Yeah, great performance for the dollar. Can't beat them.
All right, man, we covered a lot of ground. It's going to be a two-parter for the Spyderco booth review. We've had our friend, Mr. Ed Shim, doing an outstanding job hosting duties here for us. We sure appreciate it. I'm sure we missed some stuff. Some Spidey fans are oh. going to say, why didn't you talk about this or that? This is a big year. There's a lot of products that a are lot on of the products. cusp of being released and being released this year. So I thought Spider Co. is an ongoing evolution continually. One of my favorite manufacturers, Spider Co. Uh, and again, I'm a little bit overwhelmed with all the new stuff they I came out with, dude. Uh, amazing. I, I got some favorites. You'll see it on tabletop if I can get a hold of them. Uh, coming your way. Uh, really happy that they came out with those FFG Delicas and Enduros. They're continuing them in the lineup. Last year was kind of up in the air, Ed. They're like, is I got the vibe in our Shot Show booth review. You're like, we're gonna see how they do, and uh, we'll see if we continue them. But they're still in the line so far. Spyderco works for the inline user. Yeah. It's not about what they think is best. It's what works best for the people who use the knives. Hmm. Yeah, it's concept. Uh, <laughs> Customer driven. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we got to run, man. I don't even know how long these videos will be, but we got two parts, Spider Cup. A lot of neat stuff. Thanks for your help, PFI. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Edge. Much. You'll see it's the vids pleasure. come out. Pleasure. Uh, there's Mr. Gail Bradley right there, by the way. We talked about his knife last year. Hey, Gail, you want to say hello to the Nut and Fancy viewing audience? Hello. How you doing, sir? We looked at your knife and shot 2010. The Gail Bradley with the carbon fiber. Um, the beautiful knife. Steel. Yeah. And Gail was very instrumental in the blade sports. In fact, without Gail and his wife Hester, blade sports uh, might not be around. They were they were very hard workers. Like you made very kind. Instrumental. They used instrumental. the M4 steel. Gail has brought that right to, right to the top. And, Basically, help bring it into the knife line. Right. Do you guys want to know more about that M4 steel? I think we had a very detailed discussion, Shot Show 2010, that you you kind of took us through, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So the details are out there, and uh, we had a really good. I won't do it again because it's already out there in video form. A good look at the Gail Bradley. Thank you. Beautiful very much. knife. Nice meeting you, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. This is a uh, nothing fancy PFI dude, Ed Shimp. Sal Glesser out there in the back signing off from Spider Co. Shot Show 2011. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned, we'll do a few more for you.